Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Drone Maverick. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all the comments and all the engagement that you guys do on this channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the history of drone photography, where it all started, and where it is to this day. Alright guys, so with that being said, let's do this. So how did drones become part of human history? When people are referring to a modern day drone, they're usually talking about a remote controlled unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV that civilians can purchase for fun or commercial use. The first attempt to build a drone can actually be dated back to the time of Nikola Tesla. The highly successful inventor applied for a patent back in 1898 for the world's first radio controlled boat. He gave it a weird long name called the method of and apparatus for controlling mechanism of moving vessels or vehicles. Wow, what a name. Although unsuccessful, Nikola could manipulate his boat to some degree remotely without wires. Soon after the Wright brothers flew the world's first airplane in 1903, Tesla tried to figure out how to remotely control an airplane. Some speculate that the military hired Tesla to build one, but could not create it before he passed away in 1943. So the first modern drone takes flight. Fast forward to 2006, and now you are in Frank Wang's apartment at the University of Hong Kong in China. When Frank was young, he became fascinated with RC helicopters, but instead of hours of flying, he spent long hours repairing them after every crash. And I tell you, it's easy to crash uh, drones, it's easy to crash RC helicopters. From this, he began creating better parts and more intelligent software to help remote control helicopters become more stable and crash less. Thus, Frank started his own company called DJI, which stands for Design Innovations. Dijang, which I'm probably saying it wrong, is Mandarin Chinese for the Grand General. In 2013, DJI released the Phantom 1 to the public market, and let's just say that this drone started turning some heads. What made the Phantom 1 better than the remote control helicopters? Number one, the Phantom was affordable. It had little to no assembly required. It had four rotors for incredible stabilization. The first of its kind on the public market to use GPS satellites to maintain its position in the sky. Hovering all by itself, this drone didn't need self-correcting joysticks. I actually didn't know that helicopters, uh, remote control helicopters needed that in order to hover in place. You could literally put your remote on the ground and watch your drone just chilling out in the sky. This blew the hel RC helicopter competition away and many people loved this new technology. However, the Phantom 1 did not come equipped with a camera. So many people began attaching their GoPros underneath to make videos. DJI was focused on building their own brand and released the next version of the Phantom 1, which came with a DJI camera. How did drones grow at such a rapid pace? As cell phones and drones were being developed within the same time frame, the two became inseparable. Cell phone companies were investing billions into research and development on all the internal electronics. Much of that technology migrated right over into the drone world almost immediately. Technology like the GPS to prevent the drone from drifting away from you. The gyroscope helps the drone to hover in place. The magnetometer figures out where's north. The accelerometer displays how many miles per hour the drone is flying, how fast the drone is actually flying, and the barometric altimeter which is used for measuring how high the drone is off the ground. These all had a part to play in the development of your drone. So how does your drone actually work? From the moment your drone takes flight until it's powered down, everything is communicating with your drone's flight controller. Object detection prevents you from accidentally flying into trees, preventing serious damage to property or the drone itself. The return to home button brings you right back to the same location where your drone took off, even if your remote loses battery power and disconnects from the drone, the drone will still come right back to you. Which when I learned that little feature, I was like, thank God, because if something were to happen and, and like, where'd the drone go or something, I can't see it, it'll just come right back to me and I'd 
That's a really great feature. High quality image sensors allow you to capture incredible pictures for epic cinematic shots. Even the motors are being told how fast to spin individually so your drone remains perfectly still in the air. So how did people used to get aerial images? The only way a civilian could get those epic mountain shots was a $300 to $600 ride in a helicopter, which had to be at a specific time on a specific day. It was very expensive, loud, and often a very shaky ride, which probably led to a lot of, you know, photos looking blurry instead of still clean image. Using a low-cost drone eliminates the need for an expensive helicopter so the beginner drone pilot can take unbelievable pictures and share them on their social media account. If you want more information on the best drone for beginners, click on the link in the description below. How can drones make you look like a pro on social media? Drones reveal what your followers always wanted to see, but can't unless you show them when you buy a drone. Apps like DJI GO 4 come with a movie editing software that will cut out sections of your drone footage and make a small movie for you with music. That way you can instantly share your first drone video on social media effortlessly. It's a great way to get your feet wet. It's not the best software because I don't particularly use it anymore. I did in the beginning, you know, but when it takes all the footage that you just did, cut it up, stitch it together, and it comes out as a cool little movie, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's not, it's not a bad start. To buy the best entry-level drone, click on the link in the description below. So what does the general public think of drones? You would be amazed at how many people are surprised and excited to see one in person. Most, if not all, people will ask you the same question. How high does it go? It stops automatically at 400 feet. How far can it fly? It can fly over a mile with no trees and buildings in the way. How long can it stay in the air? Typically 25 to 30 minutes. Does it have a camera? Yes, all drones come with cameras now. Very rarely will you encounter that one dude who's allergic to having any fun with a drone. If this person doesn't leave you alone, say something kind and ask the person to leave. Industries that are now looking for Part 107 drone photographers. And a Part 107 is simply a commercial license to do photography with a drone. Agricultural farming for crop dusting. Cattle ranchers for counting cows. Yes, you can actually use a drone to count how many cows. News agencies for traffic jams. They were one of the first people to use drones to, to go out there and they switched over from helicopters. Real estate agents to get more visibility and exposure to homes and locations. Stock photography websites. Geo-serving for volumetric data. You can actually measure the amount of dirt that's or uh, aggregate that's on the ground using a drone. It's incredible. Shipping contractors, urban planning, the moon. Why not, right? I would do that. I would put a, I'd put an FPV drone up there and I would be flying that thing all day long. That'd be like the best GoPro footage ever. Law enforcement you actually use heat sensing drones to find, uh, find criminals. Hotel resorts to invite guests for relaxation and getting away. Archaeologists to map old worlds. I tell you what, I would drop everything to go do that. If they found a civilization like over in Israel where there was, they wanted to just map out the area, I would do it in a heartbeat, absolutely. Volcanic geologists to study volcanic activity. 3D map making for greater details. You would be amazed at all the stuff you can see like on your property with a 3D map of your property. It's incredible. Air quality testers for helping the environment. I know that when COVID started hitting in uh, China really hard, they were sending out drones to spray the cure in the street. They were trying to get rid of it. Wildlife conservationists were studying and preserving wildlife. Search and rescue. This one is downright cool. I have heard multiple stories of people using drones to go out and give 
uh, a stranded person a radio that has that they found them with uh, a heat mapping uh, drone where like you can see the heat signature of someone they send out the drone they give them a radio and then they communicate if they're injured or something awesome stuff wedding photography people are using drones like to get those overhead shots and all that I'm not into that just yet golf courses for high-end clubs now that's an interesting one that I would dabble into wind turbines for reducing accidents during inspections you know it's a high liability for putting a man like really really high up in the air so they send the drone up instead to do an inspection and you know the number one thing that wind turbines destroy is birds <laughs> City bridge inspections for maintaining structural integrity. Tactical sport for enemy positions. There's actually a really cool drone out there. It's like $40,000 for this tiny little drone and it's, it's incredibly quiet. Oil rigs for a safety inspection. They use drones quite often. Mineral and gas companies. And my personal favorite, a flamethrower drone. Yes. I, we're talking about a real tool that you can attach to a DJI S1000 or a DJI Matrice, uh, Matrice 600. You can legally own one of these things and use them as a tool for service for high power attention lines to get rid of all the debris that ends up getting caught up there. It's actually the safest way to get rid of any debris that gets on the high tension lines. And it's awesome. It's really, really awesome. Another problem that high power lines actually have is bees. They have a huge problem with bees and this is the best way to get rid of those bees. So if you're seriously interested in a drone career, click on the link in the description below for more information on how to get started. It's the exact same company that I went through when I knew nothing about drones and I just had a passion for them and I wanted to learn everything from how to get my license to how to start a business and what do I need to do and, and it's all right there. It's a really, really affordable education. So how can Maverick Aerial Photography help small businesses like you? I help small businesses get visibility and exposure by creating short marketing videos for their social media accounts and websites with drones. I also do 3D maps of property and 3D virtual tours with a virtual tour camera. So check out my website right now, book an appointment with me, let's have a conversation and talk about your business and see how I can help you grow in your niche. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. You guys are awesome. It's because of you that I'm able to just get on front of the get in front of the computer, make videos like this, educate, and then just to see your reaction to it is just incredible. Thank you, thank you so much for all the support, guys. I really I love all of you. I appreciate it when you hit that like button, subscribe, and then you leave a comment below. So thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.